Kelly, the U.S. Treasury Department this morning announcing historic sanctions on the Russian Central Bank. It prohibits U.S. persons from transacting with the Russian Central Bank, Russia's National Wealth Fund, and its finance ministry. The U.S. is joined by or will be joined by nearly all developed nations in the sanctions that target a G20 central bank for the first time. The result has been a plunge in the, in the ruble. It now takes Oh, now it's 100. It had been as low as 110, 110 rubles to buy a dollar, up from 83 on Friday and 73 before the war began. In other words, the ruble is worth about one U.S. cent. The decline promises higher inflation in Russia, a curbing of consumer goods imports, and possibly recession. The Russian Central Bank, in response, raised rates to a bone-cracking 20 percent from 9.5 percent prohibited purchases of foreign-owned Russian assets and requires companies to sell their hard currency back to the central bank, or 80 percent of it anyway. The country has touted its $630 billion, what it calls Fortress Russia foreign reserves. And while much of it now cannot be used to support the ruble, some of it could be accessible. 17 percent is in China, which has not signed on to the agreement as of yet. And a bunch of it is at the Bank for International Settlements, about $25 billion over there in Switzerland. They are not subject to Swiss law. Russia may have access to that money. U.S. officials in the Treasury and the Fed are almost certainly watching U.S. markets for negative signs. And thinking about the potential impact on the U.S. economy, we haven't seen the worst kind of signs you might have expected. Uh, banking and central bank experts I spoke with said there's only limited Western bank exposure to Russia and ample short-term dollar funding in the market now. The sanctions and the war will mean higher commodity prices and inflation, and some are bracing for possible counter sanctions from Russia. There could be additional impacts from the next year to drop. The naming of those additional Russian banks barred from the Swiss financial, SWIFT financial messaging system. That could be coming in the next couple of days. And I was going to ask, Steve, how many different measures are left at this point? Because it feels like pretty much everything has already been thrown at the Russian economy. Am I right in that? Or are there still many more levers to pull here? Well, there's one lever to pull. I hate, I, I, I'm, I'm uh, uh, reluctant to mention it, but the big lever that has not yet been pulled is barring Russian uh, energy exports. Uh, True. That is specifically being left out. Um, but these are, uh, especially the Russian Central Bank one, we haven't gone there before. Um, and that is a big one to, to, to watch. But so far, when I look at the things like the FX swap markets or some of the uh, U.S. dollar uh, overnight rates, they seem to be relatively well behaved yet. And we'll get to see how the markets will behave or how the internal markets will behave, the plumbing will behave once the um, other banks are sanctioned out of SWIFT. And that's been